Hello and welcome to part 3 of the three part lesson on CAD preparation of the ANSYS innovation course on aerodynamics of an FSA car. In this lesson we will continue from the previous part and prepare the CAD for meshing. Specifically we will look at how to create fluid enclosure around the car for external aerodynamic analysis, draw fluid regions around wheels for giving moving reference frame boundary condition and finally create named selections to be used while meshing setup and post processing sounds interesting right let's get started once the cad is clean we will start modifying it for meshing we will start with a brief discussion on moving reference frame or mrf which is needed for simulating the wheel motion by default ansys fluent solves the equations of fluid flow in a stationary reference frame however in problems containing moving parts such as rotating blades rotating wheels and moving walls are involved it is advantageous to solve these equations in a moving or non inertial reference frame in most cases the moving parts render the problem unsteady when viewed from a stationary frame however with a moving reference frame the flow around the moving part is modeled as a steady state problem with respect to the moving frame in this simulation as we will be defining a rotating wall condition for the wheels hence it is a best practice to define a mrf zone for the rims for an accurate fluid flow simulation around and through the wheels and the wheel rims we will be discussing the advantages of using the mrf zone for the rims in the following lessons now let's go through the steps to create mrfs for the rims of the wheels click on the axis of the front wheel then go to section mode as shown once the cad is in section mode select move grid select the rotational axis for moving the grid as shown and enter 90 degrees next click on sketch and select the section mode plane created at the center of the wheels now follow the steps shown to draw the mrf zone for the rims Once the sketch of front MRF zone is created, click D to go back to the 3D mode. Click on pull, select the MRF sketch on front rim and revolve around the center axis. For brevity, we will just move the copy of the same MRF zone by a distance equal to its wheel base in the rear direction. we will name the newly created solids in the component tree as front mrf and rear mrf respectively further we need to subtract the rims from these solids so let's click on combine in design tab select front mrf as target and the front wheel as cutter a new solid gets created in the component tree let's perform same operation for rear wheels We need only the newly formed solids. So to simplify our model, let's delete the original solids and apply the same nomenclature to the new solids as shown. One thing to note is that we are creating MRF zones on wheel rims present on one side of the car only. This is because the other half of the car will be ignored as we will be performing a simulation assuming longitudinal symmetry of the fsa car now since this cad will be used for external aerodynamics we will need a fluid enclosure around the car this would look as if we were testing the car inside a wind tunnel as this is a demo tutorial for reducing the total cell count in the mesh we will be modeling only one half of the car for this we will need two planes 
which will be used as cut planes. For creating these planes, go to design tab and select planes. Now click on Z axis to create XY plane passing through the middle of the car. To create bottom ground plane, click on the bottom face of any of the patches. Press escape to get out of the plane tool. Now hide these planes. To create an enclosure around the car, in the prepare tab, select enclosure and then by pressing left mouse button, draw a box to surround the car. For the dimensions of the enclosure, we can either use a default cushion value or enter the distance between the walls of enclosure and the car. To capture the wake, we need to have the outlet away from the car so that the outlet does not influence the wake development. Here, we will have the enclosure wall length behind the car around 10 times the length of the car as it is a best practice to have the outlet of the fluid domain placed at the distance of around 8 to 10 car lengths from the car. In our case, that is about 30,000 millimeters. Have the enclosure wall length in front of the car as around twice the length of the car as normally flow remains unaffected in the upstream region of the car. For this CAD, it comes to be around 6,000 millimeters. Enter 4,500 millimeters for the right and top enclosure walls. Keep the default values for the left and bottom as we will eventually delete them to get symmetric half model and to create ground. Once done, click the right check mark button. Click escape to close the enclosure tool. Hide the solid car parts. This is how the enclosure looks like. Notice that the solid car parts have been automatically subtracted from the enclosure. The next task is to split the enclosure in order to match the symmetry of the CAD. This can be done using split body tool or combine tool. Here we will show it using split body tool. Now activate the split body tool, unhide both the planes that we have created earlier. Click on the enclosure to select it as a target body. Then select XY plane as cutter and when the option moves to remove regions, click on this left half. Notice that once the left half is removed, the tool moves to cutter again. So select bottom exit plane and then when tool moves to remove regions, click on this bottom region to remove it too. Press escape to get out of the split body tool and hide the planes. This is how the final enclosure should look like. We will only need the enclosure and the MRF zones for further meshing and solution setup. So let's hide and exclude the car body and planes from the simulation. Remember that it is one of the best practices to apply shared topology to the model at the CAD level itself. Shared topology ensures a conformal mesh between two intersecting faces or regions this helps to resolve the flow in a better way. In our CAD, we have three fluid regions, so we need to apply the shear topology here. This can be done from the shear topology group of the prepare tab. Click on shear. ANSYS discovery detects the faces which require shear topology automatically and are highlighted in red. Click on the green tick option to complete the shear topology operation. Please note that the shared topology operations may take some time depending on the computer system you are using. Once the shared topology is completed, we will move to the last and most important task at CAD level that is named selections. Named selections are very useful for identifying different parts in a complex geometry. Additionally, they are also used for quickly specifying local meshing controls during the meshing phase and defining boundary conditions for the simulation. For specifying named selections to the different surfaces, click on Advanced Selection option at the bottom of the screen. Now, select the front face of the enclosure and in Groups, click on Selection. This will add the selection under Named Selection as Group 1. You can rename it by either double-clicking on Name and typing the new name or by right-clicking on it and selecting Rename and then giving it the desired name. Here, since this is an inlet face, we will name it as inlet. Create the named selections for the remaining external boundaries by repeating the steps shown. The named selections for the external boundaries are shown here. 
इनलेट आउटलेट टॉप वॉल साइड वॉल क्राउन एंड सिमेट्री नाउ टू क्रिएट नेम सेलेक्शन फॉर इंटरनल बाउंड्रीज कन्वीनियंटली सेलेक्ट ऑल द न्यूली क्रिएटेड नेम सेलेक्शन फ्रॉम द एडवांस सेलेक्शन एंड हाइड दम नाउ बाई होल्डिंग कंट्रोल सेलेक्ट ऑल द फेसिस ऑफ द एनी वन कार पार्ट एंड क्लिक ऑन सेलेक्शन टू ग्रुप ऑल द सेलेक्टेड फेसिस इन टू वन ग्रुप Alternatively, you can also box select all the faces of that car part, and then create name selections for that group by clicking on selection. I will now start the name selections from front view. For that, orient the model by clicking on the y-axis here at the right bottom corner. This gives a nice view for selecting things. Let's box select the front view. Here you can see that one extra face has been selected. which is not part of the front wing this surface is behind this top surface we can directly rotate the cat find that face and by holding control click on it to deselect it but there is another direct way to do so which does not involve changing the view to do so in the same view you can take mouse pointer over that face hold control and scroll forward the mouse wheel till the selection goes to that face hiding behind once you get to that face then click on it by keeping control press to deselect that extra face now we have all the desired faces selected so we will click on selection and then rename this newly created group as front wing once the named selection for a part is complete you can hide it so that only faces without named selections are displayed using the same process we will create the named selections shown here now all the named selections for the parts except chassis have been created and all those parts have been hidden and only the chassis parts are visible so let's box select all the visible faces and click on selection we will rename the newly created group as chassis this completes the named selection part Now to show all the surfaces we will do a right click and select show all this shows all the cat elements to show only the entities included in the simulation right click anywhere outside the cat and select hide all suppress with this the cat preparation is complete we have seen how to clean up and prepare the fsae car geometry for simulation a natural question could be Do I have to do this every time a geometry change is introduced to my initial CAD file? The answer is no. One could continue using the clean geometry in discovery and quickly make the corresponding changes to the geometry in discovery without having to re-import and re-clean the entire CAD geometry modified in their own CAD program. Now, to transfer the CAD directly to machine, go to prepare tab and in the geometry transfer group Click on drop down menu under fluent and select the watertight geometry workflow to transfer it to the ansys fluent machine watertight geometry workflow here you can also select export pmdb to save the cad in pmdb format for further use if you want to save this cad in other supported formats you can do so by clicking on file menu and then clicking save as and choosing the format from the list of available formats This brings us to the end of the lesson. Let's summarize what we have learned in this lesson. We learned how to create fluid regions around the wheel rims for giving moving reference frame condition during solver setup in order to model the fluid flow correctly at the wheels. Going further, we understood how to create fluid enclosure around the car for external aerodynamic analysis. Next we learned how to apply shear topology between the three fluid regions in order to generate conformal mesh between the fluid zones After that we learned how to create named selections for various car parts which is very helpful during meshing and solution Finally we learned how to transfer the CAD directly to meshing or save it in PMDB and other supported formats With that let's wrap up the lesson